welcome back to the Refined Strength Podcast, my good friend Kaylee Overt. How are you doing today? I am doing good. If you yeah. would asked me yesterday, I would have said I'm crashing and burning, but today, <laughs> today is a good day. Why were you crashing and burning yesterday? Uh, just, just life. Uh, yeah. Jake's out of town, so I have the two kids on my own, and my friend um, had an emergency with her son. And he had to be taken by ambulance two hours away, like in the night. So I drove yeah. to St. Louis yesterday to take her a bag of stuff because she didn't even have a bra on. She had like in her pajamas. So I drove up to get or to drop that off. I had to pick up my car that had been gone since Thursday. They spilt something in it. There were maggots in my side door of my car. Holy shit. Who yeah. spilled something in it? Your kids? No, it would have been like, I took it up for an oil change and there was some other stuff they found. So they're like, we're going to give you a loaner. We're going to have your car. We don't know how long. Well, I had an old Fairlife protein shake bottle in the side door. They must have hit it and cracked it. And so from Thursday until yesterday, it leaked out. And I like, as soon as I got in my car, like they brought it, I'm like, what's that fucking smell? I'm like thinking a baby bottle. Like I left one of Henry's bottles. I pick it up and there's just maggots underneath in my door. And I'm like, this is cool. So I like baby wipes. I like cleaned it all out and Pearl had horse riding last night. So I literally was like working till still till like 9 PM last night, like still getting through just, just work, just life. Yeah. Just life. You got to do it. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I'm glad today is a better day. Um, I wanted you to have on. Uh, meh, meh. I wanted you wanted to have you on the podcast if I can talk because it has now been almost exactly a year since we fucking left Pro Physique and started our own. Yeah, business. man. I was thinking about this because I was thinking I knew we were going to discuss this, and I was coming back from taking Pearl to school today, just thinking of like all the shit show of this past year, not to do with me and you. And I'm just like, man, when, when shit goes down or is going on, it's so nice to, to be on the other side. Yeah, (laughs) absolutely. Yeah, I agree. And it's just like, I, it's, I know when we did our last episode talk, you know, we talked about just like why, why we left. So everyone Mm kind of knows that if you haven't, if you don't, You can obviously go back to like one of the first episodes I did of this podcast back in October. Um, And, you know, it's very similar in terms of the last podcast I did with Jess Best, who's now on my team. Um, So for anyone listening, you know, listen to those two episodes if you're curious. Like a lot of people like the tea or whatever. They think that there's there's more tea than there is. But at the end of the day, like it all comes down to just like us needing to to step into our own and do our own thing for us, for our families, like our lives and livelihood. And yeah. So how has it been since? It, you, you know, did- it's been great. Like I, I can't say there's anything dramatically different in the last year for me in terms of business, like, which is good, I think, because I had a really solid roster and I, I still do like, you know, you'll have clients that take a break or whatever, but I've gotten new. I do think that, I've shifted more, I have more lifestyle than competitors now, where when I was with Pro Physique, I think I had more competitors. Well, or I just had more competitors than I do now. Um, But I think a lot of that, it has nothing to do with like being on my own versus being with them. It's where I'm at in my life. Cause I I feel like who someone is, is should mimic what their business is. And I'm in my my mom era right now. You know, I've got two kids, busy life. Um, so I think when people see me, you know, training and making it work with two kids, I'm going to get people who want, you know, want to get into health and fitness who yeah. are also moms and doing that, that part of it. Um, but yeah, I mean, business is good. Everything. I don't regret my decision, you know, cause a year is a long time. So after a year, you'd either be like, Oh fuck, what did I do? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that's not to say, you know, I had, cause we, we recorded like fresh after we had both quit. Yeah. Um, and I think I went through a little, and I think I've discussed this with you before. Um, but I went through a little bit of a, like a grieving period, almost like a, 
Like yeah, it was almost here. like the stages of a breakup, right? Where it's like, did I do the right thing? And then you, you know, you have people that tell you that you're family and you're really close and you're at their house for dinners and doing this. And all of a sudden, like, it just gets cut like a, like a bad breakup. And you like, it took me a while to understand it wasn't me, it was them. Mm-hmm. Um, and I actually said this um, to somebody who has left um, this year that it's, it's insane. But in the beginning, we were made to believe that we weren't loyal. And that's why we left. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, 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 we were discussing it. And I said, the sad part is, it's that we were so loyal, we stayed longer than we should, mm-hmm. or should, yeah. you know, and it took me a while to process that. Um, but well, now like loyalty is an interesting term too, if you really think about it, like in this context, because I think a lot of people stay with people, whether it's a relationship, a business, a, you know, a coach, they stay with some someone because they're so concerned with loyalty and what that means yep. that they don't really realize like what is being loyal to this person or this company do for me? Yeah. You think that it's going to do this thing for you. Like, you know, you're a better person because you're loyal or you're, you know, you're waiting for something to, to be given back to you if you're loyal, Yeah. but that never really happened. And I think that's what we, we had started to see is that like, we were loyal to a fault, you know, so yeah. loyal that we didn't really see the writing on the wall as early as like probably we could have. And, um, and for me, that was true too. Like for me as an athlete, uh, in like my coaching is that, Hey, stop, stop. Um, is like, I stayed with my coach for way too long, simply out of loyalty because I felt like I owe it to this person to, give them a chance and keep trying and keep giving them chances. And sometimes that's just like, they don't just, des- people don't deserve that loyalty. So you have to really think like, if you're hung up on loyalty to anyone in any type of relationship, what are you really getting out of that loyalty? What are you getting back from it? Yeah. And I think it was a hard look at, and I don't think I realized it until obviously what happened with us and, and the, how we, you know, how the treatment went, but watching (laughs) every person since get the same really told me like, shit, man, it wasn't me. It wasn't, you know, and I do think a little bit, um, I was thinking of this today on the drive. I think you and me leaving and I don't, I I don't want to word this where I'm like, oh, it's me and Rachel. But I think when two people that people look up to walk, Mm -hmm. it made other people say, oh shit, I've thought the same thing. I'm not crazy, you know? And so, and I don't think people leaving had anything to do with us, but I, I think it, it helped traject a few, I think, because I've talked, you know, I didn't talk to them before had nothing to do with other people quitting, but I had them reach out and say like, I've had the same feelings or the same concerns and, and all of that. Yeah, I agree. I think like it's, yeah, when people look up to you, like you, people see you as a leader. And so like, even though you're not their boss or you're not their leader, you're in a different place from them. Like they, I, I do agree with that, that like, it just makes you think more. It makes you ask more questions of yourself. And that's a really important part of just like life evolution and becoming a better person and a be- and better at what you do is like just asking yourself questions. And I like, I would say that us asking the questions of ourselves, like, is this really what we want anymore? That's like what propelled us to make the decisions we made and and why they ended up being correct. Cause it wasn't, wasn't necessarily like only about money or only about one thing or like, you know, drama yeah. with one person. It's like, it's everything. So how has, I know you said like things haven't changed a ton. How, how have things changed for the better for you? Like, how have you been able to evolve more as a coach? I get to coach how I want to coach. Like that, the most refreshing thing and scary thing in the beginning was it's all up to me now. Like Mm -hmm. what my business looks like, the reputation of my business, how I coach, how I approach current clients, you know, potential clients. It's all up to me. Uh, And that that part is really cool because I get to like I use Google Drive Sheets now for everything, which is great. I get so much more data. It's so much easier 
like just the way my day to day runs now is so much more smooth. I don't have to worry about like a system being down or <laughs> having to have a second sheet because the check in way doesn't have the data that I need. Like all of that is really nice. Um, I was already using, like I use Trainerize for the training programs. Um, I was doing it before, even though I would be Not told I needed to. to stop, I wasn't allowed to, whatever. Yeah. Um, so all of that just runs. But it's just the nice changes is I, I just get to control everything, which is so nice. And I don't have to worry about, especially with everything going on in that space right now, I don't have to worry about other people's actions affecting me and my image and like i have full control of that so if my shit burns to the ground it's a hundred percent my fault for better or worse but i like that like i like that security of knowing like yeah. i can be myself i don't have to worry about somebody more telling me i need to change the way i speak or talk or approach or do anything like i get to just be myself and that's really nice and i've noticed you get to do that too which is amazing like your brand has flourished so much in the past year. Like, I'm so freaking proud of you. Thank you. Yeah, I agree. I think that's probably the biggest thing that I think has changed for me is that I've been able to just like find not, I think I had a good, like my voice before. I never felt like so stifled that I just couldn't talk, speak at all, speak up. Mm -hmm. But I definitely felt like there was like a, a filter where like I had to, and like, you know, you're not really that much of a filtered person either. I'm not either, but you know, there was still like the always kind of like a fear that I would be making someone mad or making, you know, that I would get some sort of feedback that I didn't want to deal with from, from the, the authorities. And it was just so, it's been so nice to be able to like, hear myself and see myself like stepping into like my own power as a coach yeah. and when I as I've been able to do that and like really like put anything and everything that I want to out there what I feel like has happened is that it's allowed me to like learn more about my clients and it's got it's allowed me to like get to know my clients better and because I'm not afraid of like asking certain questions I'm not afraid of like holding people to a higher standard too, which is like before, I think I did have a, a slight fear of that because of well, just like being- Yeah, they were keeping it. track of like your conversion rates and your, you know, so it was like, even if you had a client that did no longer needed to be coached for whatever reason, there was like this fear of like, well, if I drop them, then I'm gonna have to explain why this, you know, it was all about money and numbers and that part, yeah. like it's free now that if it's rare, and I think I've only done it honestly one time ever, but if I, if there's somebody, cause I just had a client the other day, I didn't like, we're still working together, but I had a conversation like she was wanting to diet again and we are not in a spot for that. And I was like, listen, I understand. I will refund you cause she had an upfront package. I'm like, I will refund you your money if you're going to do a diet phase anyway, but I'm like, I'm not going to do that. And I, I could do that. And I knew that she could get her refund because I control my refund policy, yeah. you know? And so yeah. it was just nice to be able to like stand firm and like, I'm not comfortable, more than happy to give you your money back. And she ended up being like, no, 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 you're right. You know, it's fine. Um, but before we didn't have that, you couldn't do that because they're, they wouldn't give them their money back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. I, th I had, um, I've been enjoying just being able to set a higher standard for myself and like the coach, the clients that I coach, not only that like are already with me, but the people that I bring on is like, I don't give a fuck about my conversion rate. I couldn't tell you what it is because I don't care. Yeah, same. I want to know that I am signing on an athlete who wants to work with me, who isn't just working with me because of the hype of another person and yep. someone who's going to actually follow my coaching and who understands my values and understands that like, I'm the coach, you're not. And so like, I also, I let a client go recently. It was like mutual because, you know, she signed up, she had very, very unrealistic expectations. And um, we just were not on the same page with like what was best for her health and her like success trajectory as an athlete and like her goals that she had. And like, 
no hard feelings. It wasn't a negative experience. Yeah. We had good talks and whatever, but it ultimately came to like, yeah, this isn't a good fit. If this is what you want to do and this is what I think you should do. So I had no problem just like letting her go. Like if you ever want to come back, you're welcome. But like, this is how I coach and I'm not going to go against my ethics or, you know, my boundaries as a coach yep. when I know that they're, I'm, what I'm doing is correct. I, I can sleep at night knowing that like, I'm putting your health and best interest in mind. Yep. And that's just like, that's so important to me as a coach. And I've seen the benefit of that over the years. Like even when I did kind of that way, especially when I would have people like consult with me before signing on. And if I felt thought that they weren't ready to do what they want to do, I would tell them like, I wouldn't care if I was going to get a talking to about like, Oh, Hey, why didn't you close that client? <laughs> Cause it's just not worth it to me. I'm like, I'm not that coach. So if you don't like it, you can fire me. It reminds me of that meme with that. Like, I don't know if it's a little rat and he's got the cup, like, please, sir, may I have a crumb? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like I just, I don't, I don't care about that. So I would rather have clients who really want to do things, not just like my way or the highway, but like do things right and like are willing to listen to me because at the like you're hiring a coach because you want to be coached, right? You're not hiring a coach so you can coach yourself. One of my favorite things that I love about you, not even as a coach, but just as a human, and I this part of you has, I feel like, blossomed so much over the last year is you're very collaborative. And what I mean by that is, there's enough clients for everybody. There's enough yeah. knowledge for everybody. And you really like, you don't just say that. Like I have my client that you sent me, she's 70 years old. You had yeah. a consult with her and you just felt like we're not a good fit. And so she talked to me, she's put on a shit ton of muscle. Like that's- yeah, you, I remember you sent me the, like her transformation of like eight weeks or something. Yeah. And I was like, holy shit. Like, yeah. And I've had, I don't know if any of them ever signed up with you, but anytime I have somebody who wants to do wellness or figure, I always send them your info because could I do it? I, I could try, but it, you're obviously going to be better at, at figure and wellness competitors than I am. And so, but it's okay. Like that's okay in the industry. It's okay to say yeah. like, you know what? That's not my wheelhouse but I will find you somebody who would be perfect for you. Like yeah, I love I agree. that freedom now. And like your podcast, like you have all kinds of different people and hosts and like, it's okay to like hype up your friend. You know, like when Jess came on with you, I forget that was the first thing I did. I'm like, I'm hyping the shit out of this. Like yeah. it's so cool to like support other people without having to worry about getting in trouble for it or liking yeah. other teams pictures or you know, whatever. And just, and just learning from other people too, you know, yeah. like I've learned so much from other coaches, whether they're friends or just other coaches that I've been in acquaintance with, you know, like I love learning. And I think that's the mark of, of a, either at least a coach that's going to be good, if not already good. Yeah. And I do consider myself a good coach and you as well. And just like everyone that's been on my podcast, I consider them a good coach, like yeah. who, the ones who are coaches. And like, to me, I'd much rather, like, if someone's going to be listening to a podcast and they really like one of our vibes more than the other, then they should go work with that person or they should yeah. follow that person, engage with that person and talk to them. Because, like, yeah, there is enough for us all to eat. Yeah. And there's oh, yeah. nothing that should, if you are scared because, like, what your content puts out there is, like, also highlighting someone else and, like, promoting someone else that that fear has nothing to do with that other person doesn't mean that that other person is better than you it just means that you don't really believe in yourself yeah and for me like I believe in myself quite a bit and that's why I you know I stepped out on my own that's why I've done what I've done that's why I hired Jess it's like I believe in myself so much that I believe that I'll survive no matter what happens with like who is alongside me, who I promote, whatever. Yep. And I'd always rather too, like taking the plunge to go out on my own. I'd rather fail on my own than be unhappy being successful next to somebody else. You know, yeah. like at the end of the day, like I think I'll coach for a long time. I, I enjoy it. I feel like I'm good at it. But if in five years something happened and all of a sudden like 
online coaching wasn't a thing or, you know, you never know, like mm -hmm. I have a degree. I'm, you know, I'm, I'll figure it out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you can always figure it out. So I just feel like it really, the last year has really shown me like, just go for what you really want to do. And if, if I fail, I fail. <laughs> yeah. And that's the thing. I think people are scared about going off on their own or having their own business, what, whatever kind of business it is, is that, that like, they're always worried about like, well, what if I fail? But like, mm -hmm. what if you don't? Yeah. You you might not fail. And what if you really go beyond your expectations and your wildest beliefs? Then, you know, you're in such a better spot, but you're going to fail along the way to get there. So you might as well go for it and learn from each of those failures. Like there's definitely been times that I've kind of not, I don't know if I could really call them failures, but like I've made mistakes, right? Yeah. In my right. career as a coach whether that was like putting someone on stage who wasn't ready to be on stage or, you know, not making the right call when I signed someone up and I didn't give them better expect, like clearer expectations or, you know, whatever it was. Um, no mistake I've ever made has been like so bad that I'm like, oh shit, my business is going under. <laughs> but um, I don't think I've ever, that I can recall, made a mistake where I was like, oh fuck, if somebody found out about this, I'd be finished. You know what I mean? Like I've never made that kind of business mistake or yeah. coaching mistake, but yeah. And I mean, and still, sometimes it's just something stupid. Like someone sends an email and I don't know where the hell it goes. You know what I mean? Like just with yeah. technology. I mean, I always answer all my check-ins and stuff, but you know, shit happens and you're just like, well, that was a fuck up. I'm going to do something to make sure that doesn't happen again. Um, yeah. but I think it's just part of growing and learning and whether it's about business or just, you know, normal day to day life. Yeah. But I think it teaches you to just like every thing that you either mess up on, make a mistake, fail, like you, you can use it as like a, and kind of become a victim from it mm -hmm. and like let like blame, put blame on others, put blame on the system, the industry, whatever you want to put blame on. And then you're going to just stay in one place. You're going to always be that person who blames others and who doesn't take responsibility. But when you take responsibility and you're maybe just like, even just vulnerable about the mistakes you made, or you're humble about them, like people don't realize how actually powerful that is, that humility. And I think that's like a big lesson in like, you know, where, where we've come from is like, if there's just more humility and less ego and more focus on moving forward, despite anything that's happened, like you, you're going to be better off. Like that they would be better off. And like you, you're also someone who's like very, just like humble and like owning yourself as just like a human, like I'm a mom, I have, you know, I have loose skin, I have, you know, kids, I have an emergency happening, like, but I'm still going to do my best. And like, I think people forget that people, that humans, especially like clients or the people around you, like they, they know that you're human, but if you try to be perfect and, and put yourself out there, like you're perfect and you're the best and, and all of this, then like, then people are going to expect that from you. And yeah. then they're going to expect you to never make a mistake. And I think you're going to get more compassion and forgiveness by like just being honest, like, oh yeah, I do screw up. All right. Me, I say dumb shit before I think about it. You know what I mean? Like I always made it, but I don't always think before I talk, but I think people <laughs> then when something does happen, they're less likely to want to like hang you for it because yeah. they like, it's not like you're always like, Oh, I'm perfect. and I do everything right. And, you know, this is better than, you know, because you're not like those types of personalities when they do fail at something or something goes wrong, people are more likely to want to drag them because of it, because that they're that person was shitty and <laughs> they're like, hell yeah, they got what they got coming to them. Yeah. Like, I think we could both. I'm not going to say it out loud because I don't even want to give it. But like, I think we both know that when a certain person quit a company after I said all these things about, you know, like that they were doing wrong. Like I was like, hell yeah, that's called karma right there. <laughs> you know, like the main yeah. reason that I walked away from, you know, a job I had had for four years. Um, but it's, it's that same scenario where that's, you know, everyone, yeah, we all, everyone gets what, like, 
is naturally going to come to them. Whether, you know, whatever that means to you, it can mean karma. It can just mean like a series of just like events that make sense. And it's like, for me, every, I try to like base my actions off of like the, the question of like, would I be proud of myself if I did this? Yeah. And, or would I be proud of myself if I said this? And whatever consequence of that action or words that I, I spoke, what would that make me feel? And because, like, if you can make decisions based on, like, would you be proud of yourself for something instead of making decisions based on, is this going to make me more money? Or is this going to make me more liked, like, more likable by these people? Or is this going to, I don't know, what other, like, kind of surface level thoughts go through people's minds, but just, like, looking at your values and like if you don't have values that's the first problem yeah. if you have values that are on your website or on your wall or whatever but you don't really internalize them and use them for every action that you take then there is going to be a certain point where you're you're left with not very much because you weren't or acting on values you were acting on things that humans themselves don't really care that much about yeah. And people old. eventually, like someone can tell you like they're a certain way or they believe in something. But if you're around a person long enough, the moment you realize that they're full of shit or that they're a liar or that's not true, you can't undo that feeling. No. You know, like if you tell me you're always loyal or whatever it is, and then I find out something that was like, oh, fuck, you know. You, I even if you apologize, you know, you're gonna wonder if, like, well, what are they saying now that might be true or untrue, right? Yeah. So, like, are are has this whole thing been a lie? Like, same thing if like if you're in a relationship and someone cheats on you. Yeah. It's like, even if you forgive them, there there might always be like a level of either distrust or just like wonderment about yeah. is is this like has this whole thing been a lie? Right. Yeah, it forever changes how you see that person and that relationship. Yeah. And you can't undo that. Um, and I think that's where I got to eventually when I decided, like, I need to go on my own because enough things had happened, enough promises had been broken or enough things where I was just like, I have to go because you can't uh, you get to a certain point where you just you can't undo any of that. There's nothing that can be said or done. And so it was best for me to just be like, you know what, instead of complaining about something that isn't even my company at the end of the day, like I can complain all I want or give feedback or say it should be this way or that way. But at the end of the day, that's not my company. So why don't I just go? Like, would I just do my thing? And I'm so, so glad that I did. Yeah. Um, what comes down to like stress management is about controlling what you can control and letting go of what you can't. Yep. And so I think for me, like, I really tried to do that and as like best I could in my like last year at that company. And it was, you know, I try, I basically learned to just like let go of the things that weren't my business, you know, like I, I let go of management of the podcast cause I, I didn't like the, the feeling of managing it. And I, I didn't like the things yeah. I was required to do. So I was like, well, I'm just going to let it go then. You know, yeah, you I really like, wanted to bring on like special guests and people outside of like coaches yeah. that didn't coach for the team. Things yeah, that, that I think would have been great. what I wanted, but it just like wasn't aligned with their values. I'm like, well, I'm not going to change their values. That's not my job. Yeah. I'm not a director. I'm not a the owner or whatever. So like, I'll just I'll let that go. And like, as I went throughout that last year, I just like found myself just needing to let go and let go of more and more things. And then I had that same kind of realization, like, well, I like, I, sh I might just need to let go of being here because I like, I want to have more. It wasn't about needing the control. It was like, I want to know that everything I'm doing is based on my values and nobody else's and that everything I am doing and stand for and representing are my values yep. because at a certain point, if like, like there's going to be a disconnect and like, there's going to be kind of a, a confusion from the outside, especially with like, our jobs are very social media based are very like dependent on other people's views of us in terms of like 
people who may want to work with us or not want to work with us. And I started realizing like, my values are this, they're different from theirs. So in order for me to like get the types of clients that I want, I need, and like be able to coach the way I want to coach them. Yeah. Like I need to be, I need to stand on my own business and I, I need to stand alone. Basically, and, yeah, because the sport is evolving. You either mm -hmm. have to pivot and evolve with it and everything that that entails, or you can stay where you're at and there's nothing wrong with that. But I, I definitely, you're a way better coach being able to pivot with the industry and, and go with the flow of where it's going. Um, and I think and that's best for clients too, because it, yeah. and depending on their goal now, but you know, but if somebody comes to you and they say, Hey, I want to turn pro and looking at them, they need to be enhanced or there's something, you know, there's things that we couldn't do. And, and I get that. And I understand yeah. that for me, I always thought yeah. like, this is going to sound so cheesy, but anytime, whether it's that situation or anytime I'm in a crossroad situation where it's like, shit, what do I do? Or what's the right thing? Like, I always think because I'm a mom, I think of Pearl and what would I tell her? Whatever situation I am, whatever, you know, if it's something I've done, something somebody's doing to me, I think what would my advice to her be? Like, what would I want to see her do in this situation? And that was kind of the deciding factor for me with like, I would have told her, go start your own thing. Like, you're good. Like you have, you, you know, and I remember like, pretty shortly, like a week or two after I picked her up from school, might've actually been the day that we quit. I picked her up from school and I was like, Hey, I got good and bad news. And she's like, what? I'm like, the bad news is I quit my job today. She like stopped in the crosswalk. I'm like, the good news is I'm my own boss now. And she just put her hand up and like high five me like, hell oh. yeah. And like, that was a cool moment for me. Cause yeah. she was like, I could see it in her face. She was like, my mom's a badass. Like yeah. it's not that I was, but I, her, you know what I mean? Like that really like made me feel yeah. good. Like she's I'm proud of you. Her even, though she she, even though she doesn't know all of what that means, like she's still proud of you. She knows that it's cool. She knows that it's like an important thing for you. Yeah. And I, I think like I've had similar moments of like, I don't know, especially now as I've like stepped into like, I guess more of like a leadership role with like, like the, the podcast is picking up the, like <clears throat> my, I, obviously like I have another coach on my team now and I've like, I've been more, I guess just vocal and proud outwardly about the fact that I own my own business. Mm -hmm. Like Austin has definitely helped that a lot too. Cause He's like, I think in the long real long. estate one, he keeps taking his damn clothes off. <laughs> Hey, he's the most muscular realtor. He has to be. I love it. Like every time I see one, I'm like, this is brilliant, Austin. Like yeah, he's doing great. I'm excited. Yeah, he really for him. is. This um, isn't about him, but he's doing good. Yeah. <laughs> he's in there on, on cold calls right now. Uh, um, but yeah, like he's helped me a lot. Just kind of like be more proud of myself outwardly to others. Like I, for a long time, you know, if someone asked me what I did, I would, kind of just feel awkward about that question <laughs> and I would say oh I'm a online fitness coach and I would almost like kind of apologize for it not apologize for Dang. it but I just like I hate hearing it's kind of a pet peeve of mine especially like a competitor who becomes a coach and you know they're not really coaching because yeah. and in my mind like anytime someone tells me I'm a coach they're a coach that's like what the first thing I go to in my mind is like, it's a little judgment. That's probably shitty, but whatever. Yep. It's like, I wonder, I wonder, I don't judge them right away. I just wonder, are they really a coach or do they just like to say that? Yeah. But I think a lot of people think it's going to be fast, easy money. Mm -hmm. Cause I've noticed there's people that I, you know, or friends or I care about, or even I've had like clients who have like started their own coat, but it doesn't last for very long. Cause I, I don't think people understand, like you really have to put your heart into it and your true yeah. self. And yeah. some people are just shitty people, but none of my clients that start their own business, but you know what I mean? You got to really put yourself yeah. out there and it, like your vibe either sells or it doesn't like, yeah, I mm -hmm. guess you could fake it, but people will eventually figure it out. Like I would, if I had to guess, if we took me and you and we put all of our client lists side by side and just brought up like pictures and lifestyle, They'd be very two probably different dynamics of people because you are attracting your vibe, your tribe, whatever you want to call it. And I'm doing the same. Like I have a lot of moms. I have, a you know, and mm -hmm. so you probably have some mom clients too, I'm sure. 
Um, yeah, yeah, quite a bit. But <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean. I'm trying to. What I'm trying to say and what's coming out is not the same. But you attract. No, I know what you mean. Yeah. It's like like go back going back to just like everybody has. There's enough for everybody to eat. Like we all have our different like what people want to work with us for, and that yeah. comes down to just like how you put yourself out there. And I think one of the biggest things that people who are thinking about starting coaching or maybe they already started and it's just slow going, like their biggest downfall is like they're, they don't know how to authentically show up as themselves in a way that is also marketing their business. It's like they separate the two and they're not, they like, they can either just, you know, market themselves and maybe be a little cheesy or, you know, go, go to a, like a coaching business, coach and you know say like i help women do this and you know all of the things and you know their marketing looks like everybody else's and it it either works or it doesn't but a lot of the time i think i think if you're not authentically showing who you are then it doesn't matter what your marketing looks like you're not going to have a a long-standing business but if you know how to market yourself and your clients and your the business the services the education that you have and you can really just like put it out there and even fail forward a little bit with it. Like not all of it's going to work, not all of it's going to get engagement, but you can be really, really consistent with that. Like that's, what's going to grow you as a coach. It's not just the fact, Oh, I'm in prep this year. So I'm going to start coaching and that's going to get me on my business. Like, no, really that should get your coach business because your coach is doing that for you. You're not doing that. Yeah. You know? I feel like people too, like, I think they forget people need to hear, like, if you're a, a, an online coach or you really know, even like Austin with real estate, they need to hear your voice and hear you speak because mm-hmm. you can find out real quick. Like, I'm sure the first time that you like watched a video of Mark, you were like, this is my fucking guy right here. You know what I mean? Like you can usually know pretty quick. Yeah. And I, I know I'm pretty intuitive that way where like, it, I have gotten it wrong before, but typically you can tell if somebody like is your vibe or not, if you would want to work with them or want to, you know, give them your money or give them the responsibility of you, you know, and figure prep, like, you know, pretty quick, like it'd be weird if you would have had your first encounter with Mark. I mean, like, you know, I kind of hate this fucking guy, but he seems like he does a good job. So fuck it. I'll try it out. You know, like that's, (laughs) you shouldn't do that. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're, you're right. I think that's like, it's funny when I first, learned about Mark from, you know, I don't even know who, but like I started following him. I started listening to his podcast and like, I wouldn't say I didn't like him, but I would say like, he kind of scared me a little bit and he was like, you know, pretty harsh and real and blunt. And I like, I, but something still like drew me to him. Mm -hmm. And like, there were a lot of things he would say that like, kind of like were new information and like not, I'd never heard that from a coach or I'd never heard it said that way. And like, that's part of what I think drew me to him. But like, I've told him this before, a big part of what has like allowed me to really connect with him as a client in the way that I am now. And like, one of the things that I think has helped me improve so much and as I've watched his business blow up too, even just since I I started with him is like his adaptability and his evolution as a person. And I think I saw that early on that like he is of that same value system of like constantly evolving. And that's what I've, I've really just like, I've realized how I've, how relationships have changed, how like, my client relation, client coach relationship has changed. The yeah. clients that come to me, it's people that are, even if they're not like fully bought in on like evolution, constant evolution and, and evolving and, and changing and growing, they're like curious about it. And so that's why we work well together is yeah. that like, you're going to be better if you can focus on like, you're, you can't stay in the same place. You have to continue evolving. You have to continue growing. Sometimes that means maintaining and being able to like thrive in maintenance, but it's still like learning how to grow and learning how to improve that like you're never done. 
as a coach, yeah. as an athlete, as a, a person in a relationship or as a friendship, like we're always growing, whether we like it or not, or whether we plan to or not, it's always going to happen. So we might as well lean in and yeah. enjoy it. And I think some people too don't like, I know you and I, I feel like we're both, we're like, we want to know what's next. We want to mm-hmm. learn more. We want to do more. Like some people really are like, they don't want to change anything. You know what I mean? Like this is the yeah. way they want to do it. They don't want to go outside of that. Um, but I feel like you and me are both people where it's like, I don't want to be the smartest person in the room. No, I want to be surrounded by people that are making more money than me, that are performing at higher levels than me, because that's how you keep growing. If you get stuck in a room, hold yourself to a high standard. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you're in a room or around the same people for years and you're all on the same level, the odds are you're all staying on that level. You probably, even if you're on a great level, you know, but you, you'll probably stay there because that's just, that's just how it goes. You know what? I heard something cool the other day that says like you you end up being, I'm going to get this so fucking wrong. Like the cultivation of like the top three or five people that you're around yeah. ends up creating who you are. And mm-hmm. I, I think that that there's a lot of truth to that, you know, like yeah. most of the time you don't end up dating or marrying somebody completely like, you know, it, it, it does happen, but like, if you were with some loser guy that didn't have a job, I'd be like, Rachel, what the fuck? Did you fall and hit your head. You know what I mean? Like, and I was with that. And it, I know, like, I know, I know. I, I, I know the difference between being with someone like that, bless his heart, but not for me. And someone like where I'm at now, whereas yeah. like we're both driven and yeah, we have different careers, different businesses, but we're both yeah. so driven and we both want to scale our businesses and scale our lives both individually and together. Yep. And, and I so- didn't mean that by like, you have to date people with money. That's not what I meant. But Jake is, Jake's like that too. Like yeah. he, like he has a great job, but that man is constantly on LinkedIn being like, I saw this job and it makes X amount. And I might have to move here. I might have to travel here. And I'm like, what day he came to me? He's like, would you move to Australia? I was like, I just had our second kid. I'm not moving to fucking Australia. Like yeah, sometimes I have to bring somewhere. Babe. Yeah, sometimes I have to be like, like, did I Google it for a minute to see what cost of living in Australia was? I sure did because I would live with the kangaroos. <laughs> but I love that because he, if it wasn't for him, I never like I had my state job for ten years before I quit to go full time with Pro Physique. Yeah, had I not been with somebody who was like jump. I probably would have, you know, I'm one of those personas. I might have stayed. I mean, like, I'm comfortable. I, I'll retire here and bitch about my job every day. You know what I mean? Like, but well, I'm I remember not. Even, like, before we left Pro Physique, like, and then just, like, months, pre- pre- like, before that, like, he would tell me, like, Kaylee just needs to leave. Like, we, we'll send memes to each other here and there. And he'd be like, like, send me, like, a toxic work environment meme <laughs> or something like that. And yeah. I'm like... I'm trying, man. I'm trying to get. I know he tried to get me. I mean, for the the year before I quit, he would be like, "You need to fucking go. Yeah, you, you're not being respected. You're not. I don't yeah. even want to say your name because I don't want to validate yeah. her. But every oh, time right. that would happen, he's just like, "You need to go. Clearly, this is where it's headed. This is, you know." And finally, I did. Finally, I did. But I needed like I am like even though I you know I'm like oh I'm a high performer and I like to, I am still like. I do like comfort zones. And so sometimes I like, I know that I need somebody to push me outside that comfort. Yeah. Zone. So that's I why like, I have friends so like you that you can. That, yeah. yeah. So I know you're, uh, you got to leave soon. So we'll ask the question to the time. No. Oh. What would you say? Is there anything that you would have done differently this last year to be in a better place with your business now? And then, from that next part of the question is like, what do you see for yourself in terms of like either a goal or a vision or something that you're excited about for your business in the next year? I think I would have. So I just, the reason I have to get up here is I, I just did my first like challenge group and I didn't do it for like money. Cause you don't make a lot, you know, I'm not making a ton of money off of it, but I really, my heart is more in, I think, lifestyle coaching. Like I genuinely want to help women feel better and lose weight and and get into training. And I think I was really scared about making a big shift in that because I was like, oh, I have, you know, 
I have a lot of overall wins and I've had a pro car win. And I'm like, that's what I should be doing. And part of me, like this, I'm trying to keep this short winded, but I started to feel guilty sometimes about people who would post show rebound or like seeing mm-hmm. people super lean is hard sometimes. Like, cause I know how that feels. So I feel like I wish I would have just owned that heart of what I was feeling sooner. Um, and with that, it's harder to market lifestyle for the reason too. It's a lot harder, like a 45 year old mom be like, Hey, can I post your underwear pictures on my Instagram? You know, bikini competitors like screw it, post them, you know, but it's a harder, like I've just started now working on like graphics that had like, just has them smiling with their clothes on and, and the changes, you know, because like I have a client who's lost in 13 weeks, she's dropped 30 pounds and I have not had to switch her macros at all. She's in her fifties. Damn. You know, but obviously one, it's my friend's mother and I'm not going to ask her if I can please put some bikini photos of her on my Instagram. Like I'm just, yeah. I'm not going to do that. And so it, it was cultivating a way, like, how can I like highlight this client and, 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 you know, without disrupting their, you know, their privacy. Yeah. yeah I love that. So just wanting to focus more on the lifestyle aspect moms, women losing yeah, weight. Yeah, it's still competitors, but more like no part of me is like, I don't have this big desire to like have pros on stage. I just, I think there's people out there that are really fucking good at that already. Um, and could I get to that level? I mean, I'm sure I could, but I think I'm more, you know, like lifestyle, beginner competitors, national level competitors. And that's kind of like where my heart's at. I don't think, because one, I don't want to travel to all these shows. I have two kids. I have a family. Like no. no part of me wants to be that person that's away from my family all the time to be at a bodybuilding show. Like I just don't want to. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. And I think that's really like, I think so many people in, especially the bodybuilding world, whether they're just an athlete or if they're a coach, coach athlete, whatever, is like they, they get stuck in this one identity and mm-hmm. they just stay in it longer than they should, longer than they truly desire to, because they are afraid of what might happen if they don't. They're afraid of like, well, who am I if I'm not this competitive coach that I used to be and or I think- that I, I once wanted to be? And it's like the moral of that is just it's OK to change your mind. It's OK to yeah. just step into who you really want to be. And what you're really good at and where what your heart tells you to do. Yeah. And just because you're good at something doesn't mean you have to do that. Yeah. Like if your heart you're is good at something else somewhere else, then you can yeah. follow your heart versus, you know, because I, I, I'm good at lifestyle coaching too, but I think part of me thought like, well, I have to do this because I'm yeah. they're winning. They're doing yeah. good. Like, you know, but then I was like, but what do I want to do? You know? Yeah. So that's that's where I'm starting to navigate and veer now. It's just changing kind of marketing for that and figuring out like okay, if I can't use people's bodies for marketing, then I need to figure out how I market that. Well, and you'll figure out too, like you can use bodies for marketing for lifestyle. It's just like a little different. And it's like, you know, asking for, you know, maybe progress photos once a month that are a little bit more like social media friendly for them, like in clothes or something like that or whatever. But yeah, it's funny. Like, and I'm kind of in the opposite place. It's like, I really am enjoying being a more higher level competitive coach. And I think I'm getting better and better at it. And or I know I am. And like, that's where I want to go. I, yeah, recently... and you, I can absolutely see you in that direction because I yeah. think you're comfortable too. And that like, there's a lot I would need to learn for the high level that pros are at right now. There's a lot I would need to learn about PEDs and things that I just don't know. Like yeah. I'm okay saying, I don't know those things. And I know that if people, if someone comes to me and they're like, I want to be a top pro. I don't know the things you need that I need to know to get you in that spot. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think that that's where I'm at is like that stuff excites me. Like I'm excited to do that and like get better at that and be and step more into that. And it's like to a point where I change the structure of how I like market like any kind of lifestyle. I, A, I don't really market lifestyle at all. And B, unless there's just like something I'm really proud of and want to put out there, but B, I like, I raised my prices for it because I I don't want to take as many people on. So it's kind of like more of a wait list or like very, I'm very specific with who I would bring on as a lifestyle client because I need to know that they're pretty much as serious as a competitor. And like, 
I'm okay with that. So yeah. Yeah. Um, I love where the last year has taken us. <laughs> yeah. I'm so excited for you and just like where you're going. If anyone listening is like a mom or a new mom or just like a, a female that loves Kaylee's vibe, like, or thinks she might like follow Kaylee. Her information is down in the show notes and she has a challenge going on that just started and she's just killing it. So Thanks, Rachel. If you want to get jacked AF, you're already following Rachel. <laughs> All right. Bye, guys. Perfect. Okay. Cool. Well. I know. We get to chat and I didn't even realize what time it was. I was like, we're just having a 